In the second part of this talk, we're going to be looking at how we're going to optimize the expected return by optimizing the parameters theta. We're going to do this by estimating the gradient um, of, the, of the j function, which is the expected return. And we're going to find the gradient using gradient estimation methods. When you find this, we can use gradient ascent to optimize our parameters. But this is quite hard because um, finding this gradient is really difficult. Markov decision processes are not differentiable. This has two reasons. First of all, sampling is a not differentiable operation. All sampling steps here are these diamonds with the tile is in between. A sampling step is not differentiable, which means that we have a lot of these um, dotted lines. But also, the environment is not differentiable. For example, if you look at the Atari game, it's a very complicated game with a lot of code behind it. Um, and the Atari process, it's simulated and whatever. We don't know how to run derivatives through that. So we cannot use backpropagation through the code, through the Atari environment to optimize our parameters. In other words, there is no path from the rewards towards the parameter theta. So we cannot easily use backpropagation to update or to find a gradient with respect to the uh, expected return. So we're going to have to use gradient estimation. Let's look at a very simple gradient estimation algorithm, a very, which is called simple reinforce. We sample in a loop a trajectory, and then we're going to update our parameters um, by using gradient, gradient ascent step that uses the um, the sample discount, discount, the sample discount we want to go are uh, of gamma, are uh, underscore gamma, and then uh, take a sum over all the um, gradients of log pro of log policy probabilities. So that's the, the sum over there. So you might wonder what's going on here. We'll derive the algorithm, and you hopefully will understand. We saw before that um, how this expectation works, right? But now we're going to look at the gradient. So we have a gradient of an expectation, which is basically, you can rewrite it by moving the gradient inwards. Then we get a sum over all trajectories. That's scary. Um, of this current reward to go times the um, gradient of the probability of that trajectory. This is just writing out expectation and moving the gradient inwards. Um, we can unfortunately not sample from this because to sample we need because this cannot be written as an expectation this term right here. To be able to sample from an expectation we need an expression like this where we have a probability over a trajectory we multiply that by a function of this trajectory. One way to make sure that we can actually sample and then in expectation compute uh, a gradient is a score function. So we, we, we start off with this same equation we just had. So the, um, the return times this gradient of the, um, the, the probability of the trajectories which is just coming from the discount return expectation. Now we multiply by one, or not really just one. We multiply by the probability of the trajectory divided by the probability of the tra trajectory, which obviously, obviously is one because you divide the same thing by each other. Then we just interchange these two uh, terms, which of course is the same thing. And then we get this expression over here. Now there's an expression that looks just like um, like the uh, thing that, that allows sampling for an expectation, namely. There's an expectation of the discount return times this fraction. And it turns out that this fraction is actually equal to the gradient of the log probability of the trajectory. So why is that? It's easier to look at it the other way around, that 
going from the gradient of log probability to the fraction. Using very simple rules, namely the chain rule of calculus of, of the of derivatives, you can easily see that um, taking the derivative of this with respect to theta and you use the chain rule to see that, that, that you take the gradient of the log probability to the to the probability and then the gradient of the probability to the parameters. And again, the derivative of log x is 1 over x. So we just make that 1 over the probability. And the gradient of the parameters with respect to the parameters, that's just exactly this term, the gradient of the, param of the parameters. Now this is exactly the fraction that we saw before. So we can replace this fraction by the gradient of the log probability. And this term actually allows writing as an expectation, because we have this probability um, that acts as a way to weight the different uh, returns, essentially. So it turns out that the, uh, our gradient of the of, of j, the expected return, um, is equal to this expectation of the discount reward times the gradient of the log probability of the MDP. So we have a way to compute the ensemble uh, gradient for the log probability. But how, how do we actually compute this log probability? Well, remember that we actually um, know how to compute this probability because that's um, the MDP distribution that we defined in the previous part. It starts off with initial state, the probability of, of, initial, the probability of initial state, and then loops over all the different time steps and computes the probability of each action and each state transition. It just follows the definition of the MDP that we introduced in the previous part. So again, we, we repeat this definition, and then it's a log probability, so we take a logarithm. Now, I'm sure we've seen this before. Taking a logarithm of, um, of, some, of some multiplications just turns them into a sum. So, and then distributes the logarithm over everything. So you get a logarithm of the initial state plus a sum instead of the product, product over these terms. The log, the log uh, policy probability plus the state transition log probability. This is just taking the logarithm of a multiplication and use simple calculus rules. Now we're going to look at the gradient with respect to theta of this term. Now it's very important to note that the gradient with respect to theta of the environment is zero. Changing your parameters is not going to change how the environment works. It's only going to change how your policy works or your neural network inside of your policy that, that is acting as your policy. In other words, the gradient with respect to your parameters to the uh, environment is zero. Nothing is going to change by changing your parameters in the environment. So we can just remove these. In other words, the gradient of the log probability of the trajectory is equal to the sum over all time steps of the gradient of the log policy probability. That's exactly this term over here. So to recap, what we just saw is that the gradient of the log probability of the trajectory or the log probability of the MDP is equal um, to the sum over each time step of the gradient of the log probability um, of, of taking an action otherwise, or, or the log probability of your policy. Now we're going to fill this into our grade estimate that we found before or our, uh, the expectation that we found um, could, be, could be written like this, using a score function trick. And you're going to fill in the gradient of a log probability of the trajectory using um, this sum that, that we do right here. Now we just fill in the sum of that, of that gradient and we have a very nice algorithm, which is actually just that we, that the algorithm we found at the start of this lecture, of this part of the lecture at least. 
So we get an expectation over trajectories, otherwise as or the MDP uh, probability distribution, and we sample from that to get a, a reward, a discounted reward, and we multiply that by the sum over each time step for the grade of the log probability of the policy that is computed using our neural network. Remember that. So we just use a Monte Carlo estimate, otherwise known as a sample estimate. You know, we just take a sample and get an ex to, to, to try to estimate this expectation. In other words, this equation estimates the gradient of the um, expected return. So is it a good algorithm? Well, the answer is no. It is actually a very terrible algorithm. So why is this? Remember that the expected return is a sum of rewards over all time steps, and then of course discount it. Um, so what does it actually do? It basically says that okay, we have these log probabilities, and we want to increase these according to how high the, the sampled discount return is. In other words, if you get a high reward, we're going to increase the probability of taking those actions a lot. But if you get a small reward or even a negative reward, um, those actions don't really get increased that much. That's kind of the idea behind reinforcement learning. Actions that receive a good reward, we're going to increase the probability of. And actions that don't receive a good reward, we're going to not increase or decrease. However, there is something going wrong with the algorithm, and that's the credit, the, the credit assignment problem that we actually also saw in the previous part. Um, in, in this equation, all actions are actually increased, and not just one of them, or some of them. So if we get a good return, then all actions are going to be increased. But what if we got a very high reward in the very first time step, and then no rewards at all. What happens is that all actions get increased because we got a good reward. But that means that also, for example, the very last action, A capital T minus 1, gets increased in probability, even though it contributed nothing to the first reward, which was high. So even though you know we got a good reward, namely the first one is high, we're going to get a very weird update. Namely, we're going to say, well, we want to increase very last action because we did very good in the beginning. That makes no sense. So we should actually only reinforce actions of which the consequences are good that come after, uh, that, uh, that come before taking the reward, uh, getting the reward. So can we actually do better? Yes, we can. Let's consider what the gradient of the discounted reward at time step um, t plus 1 is. Or that is, yeah, so we have some kind of time step um, t prime plus 1. Instead of taking the total expected reward, we only look at the expected reward at time step um, t prime plus 1. We do the same trick as before to find the first expression on the right. So um, we here look at just one time step and not at the whole total discounted reward. So we can just use our score function trick and find out what this gradient is. Now it's just you need the exact same trick. We find this. But it turns out that this is actually equal to just. I'm taking the sum of grain of log probabilities up until this t prime. So we don't increase the, um, the probabilities of actions that come after t prime. So that makes a lot more sense, right? So for this single time step, it makes sense to just look at the actions from the beginning until t prime and reinforce just those actions. So 
next we do, okay, we just looked at one time step, but so now we're going to look at, look at every time step. So we take a sum of every time step and use the thing we just found, namely this thing over uh, about t prime. It turns out that this is equivalent, equivalent to updating actions based on what rewards follow. So we can define a quantity named the discounted reward to go. The discount reward to go basically means, okay, we are in a current state and what rewards do we receive after this? So basically the sum of a reward that happen after T prime. So instead of looking at the rewards before T prime, you're going to look at the rewards after T prime and then discount them. It turns out that we can rewrite this equation and don't worry if you don't see it. We can rewrite this equation to this gradient over here, which sums over um, uh, this discounted uh, reward to go and then looks at the log probability at that state. So basically it's saying, okay, we're going to update um, our action at time step, uh, at time step t based on the future reward it receives, the future discounted reward it receives. And let me, let me re re repeat that one more time. We're going to update, we're going to reinforce the probability at time step t based on the reward that happens after taking that action and then discount properly. Now this is not a proof obviously how we, how, how we get here, but that's part of assignment 5c where you're going to play with reinforcement learning. It's an optimal assignment. I'd be happy to see some of you try to tackle it. And then we're going to prove exactly how we get to this equation. Using this way to rewrite the policy gradient, we can get a much better algorithm than the one we saw at the beginning of this part, which is called the reinforce algorithm. It uses um, this discount reward to go that we um, defined before. It discounts rewards from time steps um, t on, um, and then only computes the sum of rewards it gets from time step t. The reinforced learning algorithm, the reinforced algorithm first um, samples a, a trajectory. So it runs uh, an MDP and samples from it, just like we saw in the previous part, how to do this. And then it uses trajectory to compute an update. It updates this based on reinforcing actions that receive high reward to go. So actions that receive high reward to go are increased more, actions which receive low reward to go. Note that in the beginning, so the, the first few actions basically received the, the whole uh, total um, uh, discounted reward. And so they receive a much larger reward, but this is discounted. So, re so rewards in the future matter less for taking this action than rewards earlier on. So this is the reinforce algorithm. We are going to implement this in also in the, re in the reinforcement assignment 5C. If you're interested, especially if you're doing that assignment, here's some half pseudocode, half real Python code. We define a discount factor in rule one and initialize some parameters for a neural network. Then we're going to just sample some trajectories. We're going to, in, in, to loop over different trajectories. We get an initial state and we're going to initialize some stuff. Next, we're going to loop over time steps in the trajectory. It's not necessarily the, the, the number 100,000 here doesn't mean anything. It's just some kind of number because we're going to loop into terminal. What we, do, what, what we do is that we're going to run our neural network, which is our policy, which, which takes in the state, 
And that's going to create a categorical distribution over actions to take. So we sample an action and then uh, run our environment using this action. So we say environment.step, which basically says um, take an action and execute A. And that gives us the next state and the next reward. And also a Boolean in this in this framework, which is open the IGM, which you'll be using in the assignment. Whether the state is a terminal state or not. We do some registration, administration, and then say, well, if we have a terminal state, we're going to break. Otherwise, we're going to continue sampling, continue creating a trajectory. Then what happens is that we're going to create a surrogate loss. The surrogate loss is basically a way to minimize our gradient, uh, maximize our gradient estimation. Or minimize, actually, because we are going to um, do a negative one for that. So we're going to loop over the time step that we, that we saw. And we're going to say, OK, discount to re we're going to compute the discounted reward to go using exactly the formula that we found um, in the pre uh, previous year. So this is basically a sum over the time steps that happen after the current time step, where everything is discounted by the difference. And then we're going to sum the rewards after that point. Now we're going to create a surrogate loss for this term, for, for, for this time step, which is basically, um, you're going to additionally add a discount factor, this, this gamma theta that was in the reinforce algorithm. And we also multiply it with discount we were to go, is this term, and the log probability of the policy. So log pi of a s. But, and then we don't actually add the gradient here because that's PyTorch is going to do that for us by running backward. That happens right here. We say a okay, minus the surrogate loss. So we want to, because PyTorch assumes you, we're going to minimize, we want to maximize. So we, we want to maxim, we want to, <laughs> it's confusing, but we want to, um, minimize the negative surrogate loss and the surrogate loss is something that we want to maximize. Is that clear? So because we want to maximize, we minimize the negated thing we want to maximize. Right? So flip it around. And it turns out if we just run dot backward, we automatically find this equation because the backward makes sure that we find the gradients um, through this log, log policy probability. So this is some pseudocode, which is pretty much works actually in practice, uh, for PyTorch to um, run a reinforce algorithm. If you're going to be do doing uh, assignment 5C, this is a good way to start off with the first assignment. And then later on, you can expand on this to create more advanced algorithms that work better. So let's recap this a little bit. Reinforce is a very simple algorithm that uses the gradient of the expected return by estimating it using sampling methods. It's the simplest method in practice to approximate the policy gradient. It's very general and unbiased, and that cannot quite be said for everything. What exactly unbiased means, we'll be talking more about that in the next part of the talk. It has very high uh, variance, though. Variance is basically saying how much does every sample we take differ from the other samples that we could take. Methods that, that have very high variance basically means that they need a lot more samples to get a good estimation of the direction we should go to, to get a good estimation of the gradient. This means that we need a lot of samples, which is not very nice because we need, we ideally want to act as little in our environment to get good rewards. Often it can be expensive to act in the environment um, because of you know, financial constraints or computer com computational constraints or because of safety constraints. You, you don't want to keep on running things that keep failing. So we actually need to reduce this variance. We're going to be talking about this 
in lecture two about reinforcement learning. That's next week. In the next part of this talk, however, we're going to be looking at gradient escalation in general and discuss some, some concepts like unbiased and variance.